Hey everybody, Doug here. So with the television studio products that Blackmagic has introduced in the last couple of months, I've kind of wondered if they could have done a little bit better, especially for the price point of these things. So I think they're actually great switchers, but I think there's one fundamental problem that both the 4K and the HD model have, and that is the number of inputs. So they both have eight inputs, which is fine, for a switcher that costs a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, I think, but for switchers that start at three thousand and go up to forty six hundred, I think eight inputs might be a little bit too limiting for most of the scenarios where these switchers might actually be used. And so this video here is to sort of make my case for that. And I, I really wish that Blackmagic had added even additional two or four inputs to those switchers. I think they'd be a lot more useful in a lot more situations. So first of all, let me say that if if you've got one of these or you're planning on getting one of these and you're absolutely sure that it's going to meet your needs, that I'm not criticizing your decision. I'm just thinking about the sort of scenarios that I see a lot when I'm working in video and just thinking that eight inputs just isn't really going to cut it for a lot of different types of uh, situations that we might work, find ourselves working in as video producers. So let me actually kind of walk through some standard setups for different types of events that I see done all the time and I do all the time and why eight inputs just isn't quite enough. All right, so we're going to go over to my sketchpad software here and we're going to load in a couple of diagrams for different uh, types of venues that as a video producer I find myself working in. So I'm going to go ahead and load in a basketball arena here. So for people doing sporting events, this is kind of a fairly typical situation in terms of number of cameras and uh, for for sporting events in general so I'm only going to show basketball but this is going to apply to a lot of different types of sporting events all right so this is a large basketball arena at, at the level that most of us who watch this channel are going to be working we won't necessarily be shooting in any venues this big but principles still apply so all right so we're going to talk about camera placement here a little bit so all right, we're going to come and we're going to say cam the, the game camera is going to be somewhere up in here. So we'll go ahead and place that. And when you've got a, a game camera there, it's also nice to have kind of uh, a tighter camera that, the, beside it. So the game camera tends to stay fine, sort of wide to follow the action moving back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and add a second camera here that's able to get us some... Uh, some wide... So, sorry, some tighter shots. So not a necessity, but something that does make a lot of sense and you do see used fairly commonly. Okay, and then we come over here, over in this area, and we have what we call the slash camera, or slash cam. So we'll place that over here, pointed towards the court. There we go. All right, so that's very often used for an establishing shot or to get tight shots of, say, one of the coaches or one of the players who's just scored or committed a foul or whatever. So great great shot to have and it's kind of again kind of standard so the other thing we have with a typical basketball thing we'll come over here and we'll have a camera underneath the basket on each side and th these will be used to catch the the drives and fouls and all sorts of other things that are going on so right there we've got five cameras and if we're talking about an eight input switcher that doesn't leave a whole lot left so on top of the five cameras, we have other inputs that we got to worry about. Like we probably want to have score graphics. And if we want to do that with alpha transparency, that's going to be two inputs right there. So you got your fill and you've got your key. And those are going to be take up two separate inputs. And if we've got other graphics that we need to show, you know, uh, full screen uh, advertisements or whatever, like score information shown full screen separate from your score graphics software. Uh, advertisers, whatever, you know, there's going to be a lot of different types of graphics that you're going to have to show, and if you're not using the internal graphics capability of a switcher, you're going to be taking up another input with that. With, uh, the other thing is with sporting events, you're probably going to want to have instant replay, and there's yet another input right there. So we've already gone over eight for a fairly modest uh, setup. So again and then we don't even have video playback in this in this scenario so there's a lot of situations where eight just isn't going to be enough okay all right so that's sporting events so if you're doing sporting events i don't think eight is going to be enough it just you're it, you're too limited 
All right, so let's talk about another type of situation here. Let's do a convention center. And so we're shooting a business conference. This is going to be a very similar sort of situation. So we've got our stage over here on the left, and we're shooting. Typically, we're going to get put in the back, because that's just kind of how things are done. So we'll stick our camera here in the back, and I'm going to rotate it around. And there we go, basing there. We very often will have a second camera in the back for, for our wide shots. Not Again, not a necessity, but it is very common. So I'm just going to come in here, place the second camera here. This is very often an unmanned camera. It's just a, just a static shot. So just have a, ca a camera in there to get a wide shot of the, of the venue, of the room. It's something you can always cut to when your other cameras don't have anything going on. And again, it doesn't cost an extra lot to do that because you're not having to, uh, to uh, hire a camera operator. It's just... Uh, a, a static camera that isn't moving okay and then very often we're gonna want to have some cameras on the sides so to get just give different angles or for example if you've got a situation during a conference where you've got two people who are speaking back and forth or a panel you're gonna want to have cameras that are able to do opposing angles so that you want you can do tight shots on those without having to uh, rely on camera in the back so very often it's to have it's great to have a camera on the side it can be it can be up front it can be in the back but very often you have a camera on the side that gives you just just another angle so I'm gonna go ahead and place one here and also have that shooting towards the stage and then very often we'll do the same thing on the opposing side so that gives you two cross angles when people are talking to one another so the person that's on the left from the audience point of view will get a shot from the camera on the right and the person on the right will get shot from the camera on the left so again, we'll have typically have a camera here over on the right as well. So I've got that camera over there. And then on top of that, we've got other video sources we need to worry about. So for business conferences, it's very often the case where we have PowerPoint or keynote presentations that we have to include. So we're already up to five inputs again, and, and we're, we're really just getting started. Add any sort of graphics on top of that, and then we need to do lower thirds for for names for people that are going to be the presenters or whatever, if you want to do that with with Alpha Channel, you're and an, any sort of animation. Again, you're taking up two more inputs for that. So here we are, eight, nine inputs already, and we still don't have video playback. So if we need to add video playback, that's yet another. So again, eight just isn't going to cut it in that situation. All right, let's talk about one more. Let's talk about shooting a concert. So let's do a concert hall. So something, something a little more upscale, uh, you know, orchestra, that kind of thing. All right, so this is going to be sort of similar to a lot of these other ones. We're going to want to have a camera here in the back. We're going to, very often, it's not, uh, not uncommon to have another camera that gives, that gives us an establishing wide shot even further back in this sort of situation. And then again, we're going to want to have a camera from the side. Yeah, there we go. And then a, an opposing one. You can, you can vary the angle on these, just give it a little more variety. I find it very useful to have a camera or two on stage. Very often you use PTZs for that. So you can get close-ups of performers. And then it's also not uncommon to have a roving camera or camera on a dolly or whatever right in front of the stage. So we'll stick one of those up there. All right, here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six cameras already. And we don't have... We haven't established anything else. So if we need, if we wanted to do lower third graphics to highlight the name of the piece that's being played, again, if you want to do that with Alpha Channel, you got two more inputs there. If you need to do any sort of video playback, you're talking about another input yet again. So again, another situation where we've gone over eight inputs, and it's still a relatively modest, relatively simple setup. So. Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to bash on the television studio products. I think that there's a lot of really cool cap capabilities there, and uh, obviously something that Blackmagic has put a lot of time and effort into. But I think for those of us who are trying to work in the video production world as professionals, that eight inputs just very often get, isn't going to cover it. You know, I don't. I would say that I'm still on the kind of lower end of video production services that are out there. I mean, I do a nice job of the things that I do, but I don't do a lot of big, big shows. And my 20 input switcher is barely adequate in a lot of those situations. So as I sit behind me, I've got this 2ME advanced panel from Blackmagic Design, and I've got 20 buttons to select from different inputs there. And 
I often have to go to the second bank in order to accommodate all of the different things that are going on. If you're doing an outdoor event, if you want to add a drone or something like that, uh, just all these things take up inputs, and it's it's very easy to run out of those inputs very quickly. And so, I think for anybody who's trying to work professionally with video production, eight inputs probably just isn't enough. If you're working in a small studio and you know you're only going to be using three, maybe four cameras, and then you can add some graphics on top of that. Eight might be, be enough, might be sufficient for what you're trying to do. If you're doing a simple podcast with just one person, obviously eight's going to be overkill for that. So bottom line is really that I think for anybody who's a working video professional, if you're limiting yourself to eight inputs on a switcher, you're probably having to make sacrifices somewhere in the quality of your production in order to make your equipment work for you. So for those people who are trying to make a living at this or even just doing it as a side job, I think probably it would make a lot of sense to look at something that has additional inputs on it. So going even to, to like a Constellation 10ME, well, those extra two inputs can make a big, big difference. So just think about that when you're when you're planning out what, what equipment you want to buy for your video production business. I, I, I really think the eight inputs is probably selling yourself just, just a little bit short. And I'd really like to see Blackmagic introduce some slightly bigger versions of these things. And eight, uh, 12 input would be great. 12, 12 gives you a lot of flexibility that you just don't get with eight. So I'd love to see Blackmagic doing that, especially since they are now supporting 4K in this space. And I think anybody who's doing 4K is probably going to be willing to make a slightly bigger investment in order to get that additional functionality. So I'd love to hear from you, the viewers. Let me know if you can make 8 inputs work for the type of productions that you're doing or whether you would find that 8 would be too confining as well. I know for me that there's very few events that I shoot where 8 is going to work. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to do video production related content around once a week and I am doing a little bit better about that. So please continue to join me here on my channel for any topics related to video production, audio production, that, that kind of thing and even a little bit more in the IT world. So I've got some videos coming that are more IT specific. Those videos on my channel have done really well, and so I'll probably do more of that content here moving forward. So anyway, thanks everybody for watching, and have a fantastic day.